today we are going to discuss one very important topic which is related with si unit of meter si unit of length that is meter how to realize meter using optical frequency comb and its dissemination to dimension metrology see it is very important and uh, we, as we have with us today dr mukesh jevaria who is the senior scientist at national physical laboratory he will explain us this is a very new technology we actually it is a primary standard and uh, till now we were using at national physical laboratory dr jevaria will explain better but we were what we were using it was the laser interferometer and now we are having this optical comb which is a very new technology and national physical laboratory i would like to congratulate congratulate national physical laboratory which has already established and developed this at national physical laboratory india we have with us mr bn dikshit our honorable director legal metrology sir would you like to speak two words uh, yes ashutosh ji please sir please so very good morning uh, sri ashutosh agrawal ji chart director legal metrology dr mukesh jawaria ji i think he may be head of land department but length metrology in the national physical laboratory new delhi we had heard about the optical mass measuring instruments balances one piece is also available in the indian institute of legal metrology ranchi but the, we have heard for the optical measurement of the nail but it is not in the at the national physical laboratory level it may be adopted in other countries the length is the primary units of the weight and measure from which from mass and length seconds to many units has been derived so it was imagined earlier when there was a scope for the measurement and there was no standard for the length measured later on at the international level biml the unit of length was established which is called as meter and later on at the international level there was physical measurement which was developed day by day and at present it is measured in the wavelength systems the optical measurement which has been developed by the national physical laboratory in india it is a welcome step for the other measuring laboratories i hope that dr mukesh jevaria lecture will give us one step more knowledge for the measurement of the length so i hope that today meeting will be very hopeful for the all the working scientists in the legal metrology field as well as in different laboratories where the nabl is working with this very word i welcome all the people thank you thank you thank you very much sir for your kind and motivating words thank you very much so we have with us dr mukesh jevaria who is msc in physics from iit roorkee and tech in laser technology in 2006 from devi ahilya vishwavidyalaya indore doctorate in science in physics from kyoto university japan 
From 2020, 2010 to 2011, he worked as a specially appointed researcher in the Renovation Center of Instruments for Science Education and Technology, Osaka University, Japan. Later from 2011-12 to 12, he is working, he worked as an assistant professor in the Institute of Technology and Science, the University of Tokushima, Japan. He was a visiting scientist from 2015 to 2017 at Korea Atomic Energy Research Institute, South Korea. Currently, he is working as a senior scientist at National Physical Laboratory, New Delhi, since 2012. He has a lot of fellowships from Japan, India, research papers, publications, conference papers, etc. He is on various editorial boards and has a lot of research experience and, and uh, interest in the research field. As I am aware, we are also developing with the help of Dr. Javeria at all our regional reference standards laboratories, the laser interferometers for having the primary standard or we can say near to the primary standard, the length measurement. As now, the primary standard today we are going to discuss with the COM. Now, the new technology is optical frequency COM. We will discuss, we will just under, not discuss, we will understand from Mr. Mukesh Javeria, what is this technology, how we are using and it certainly it will be a very good experience and the knowledge sharing for all the participants. Thank you very much, sir. The, the, Dr. Javeria for joining us and for giving your consent to be a lecturer, to be an expert on this field. Thank you very much. We are thankful to you, sir. Now, over to you, please, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so, optical frequency comb is also a new definition that described with the now mass and the temperature using Planck constant and voltagement. So, for length, the fundamental constant C remains the C, but the way of realization is changed and everybody is in a learning stage, everybody is in establishment stage. So in India also we now procured and now established. So, so, uh, so I will go through a history of measurement of length from ancient and now how comb is going to be one of the method to realize this SI unit meter. I, uh, my PPT is, I think, uh, I believe everybody uh, is, is sharing now. Yes sir. yes, sir. We are able to see. But my request, if you will make it in the presentation mode, it will be very good. Yeah, now it's okay. F5. Now it's okay. No, sir. Still, we are able to see the left side and the right side both. I, I made it now. You just press F5. Atulji, it is F5. Okay, no issue. I will make again. Just give me one minute. Please. Uh, okay. Screen. Okay. Now it's okay, sir. F five. Now okay. No, sir. Can we are not. No, we are not able to see the, your presentation part. I don't know why. Adjust it. Just again, again, share, again, share, sir. Reshare. Stop sharing. Yes. Share. Entire screen, I will do then. Now it's okay? Yes, sir. It is okay. Please continue. We don't be, we, we, yeah, it is wonderful. Wonderful. Good. Thank okay. you. So, realization of SI unit meter using optical frequency comb. So, first, I will go a brief history. So, let's see. It is the measurement that makes science scientific. So for any science, for any kind of technology, for any kind of measurement, when it, the measurements are there, some value is assigned, some number is assigned, then it becomes the science. Because defining something through the measurement will be the first step of any kind of science. So if you, we see there are seven base SI unit for kilogram, for weight it's a kilogram, for distance it's a meter, for time it's a second, for current it's a ampere, for temperature it's Kelvin, for <coughs> amount of substance it's mole, and for luminescence of intensity it's candela. So here we will talk about meter, how meter is defined, and how meter is going to be the SI unit for the distance measurement. So what is measurement? Measurement is a quantitative comparison between unknown and a known, and known is a standard, a standard which define, which gives the quantitative idea 
what the quantity you are going to be measure you have to compare so measurement is a quantitative comparison of a unknown quantity with a standard quantity and this is the question behind the redefinition of si unit whatever si unit not only in meter but whatever so once you do a quantitative comparison of two quantity one is unknown and one is known known is standard then you have to define it in terms of some number some weight some kind of process measurement so that comes into the definition so standard can we choose our standard more wisely yes we have to choose our standard more wisely so that so that there should not be any ambiguity so for si unit the system is defined by bipm and bipm is administered by a committee committee is known as cipm that is conference on pure uh, pounds and measure and bipm is bureau of weights and measurements okay so this is a french term and in may 2019 there was a resolution i, I will not go in the detail of this kind of things but you see on the 20 20 may 2019 cipm recommended the definition of seven base si unit and their methods of the realization so for all the seven base fundamental units which are based on now i mean previously on the artifact like 1 kg is the base of a weight of an artifact that was kept in bipm france paris now that that artifact is removed and that will depend on planck constant similarly for meter it's on the velocity of light so meter is defined by the velocity of light similarly second is defined by the cgm frequency ampere current is defined by electronic charge and temperature voltage constant is through the voltage constant similarly mole is defined by the avogadro number and luminous intensity is by the candela luminous intensity so these seven base si unit now defined based on the fundamental constant now to realize those fundamental constant it is mandatory to have a state of art kind of science and technology facility so if we see 2000 uh, 2000 this word metrology will explain the greatest revolution in 2019 20 may secretary in the same year same day when the french revolution was take place so during the french revolution everything they were change so now how it this change came let's understand to understand how this is possible i will attempt to bring you a short history of land because land is already defined by a constant of nature so in ancient time the early approach to measure the length was the body parts okay so one use cubit yard phaeton foot leg for kind of like is four four arms four finger okay kind of things they used to measure now it is also we use but this is this was convenient but not consistent because a sort fabric merchant might be selling you a smaller length of fabric than you have you expect so everybody want to buy from a long merchant similarly the body part is not same like for indian person is different than the german or egyptian person okay a japanese person is short and short as compared to a european person or kind of thing so this is and the king of one place is also different than king of another place so body parts is not the right way to choose the standard but at the ancient time because there was no artifact no standard so people choose the body parts then instead of a person because person is wearing sun then say a king 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 is known as pehro pehro so pehro is a single person because king is everywhere one so people thought instead of the man let's take the king arm that is known as cubit or their palm these four four fingers okay then then also people thought king of egypt is different than king of japan king of egypt is different than king of europe 
or India because their body parts also cannot match. So once the body part is don't match, how do they do the trade? Trade. Okay, in a trade, you need the same kind of thing, similar kind of thing. So one solution was to use a particular body that is of the king or the pharaoh as a standard, but that was not the correct answer, correct thing. Okay, so in ancient Egypt, if you see surprisingly, the body part using the body part, they made the standard, or this is a granite standard. Okay, and they made these kind of Egypts. Okay, so these are surprisingly modern. Okay, and royal Egyptian cubit based on the size of the pharaoh's arm or forehead was embodied as an artifact, and based on this marble artifact they make the wood artifact i will show in the next next slide so primary cubit is of the granite then they make the secondary cubit of the wood and they do the recalibration in each month okay and that time you see that that penalty for non-compliance okay nowadays we also have some kind of provision to punish but that's not good but that time you see measurement have an important parameter that penalty was given if it's not compliance. So similar artifacts sometimes varying from town to time were common standard for length measurement in Europe, Egypt, India, everywhere. But there was also some problem. Okay. So when the problem came, then the, a committee in 1791, after the French Revolution, they decided and sit can we make a common measurement system is this common measurement system will be applicable for the all for all the type of person all the type of weather all the type of geographic land so what they did they sit together and find out a common way and that time there was no science you see 1791 is that time science was very poor that time people don't know about the science so much okay and they came with a they came with a uh, idea that earth is earth is constant earth diameter is constant earth radius is constant why not we can measure the earth radius and define a meter so what they took they took a one kilometer a uh, rope nowadays one kilometer rope and they measure the earth radius you see earth periphery from here north pole to the equator from north pole to equator it came around 10000 kilometer and that passed through the paris okay so what happened they use this one kilometer rope and measure the earth periphery okay and then what they did they measure and found that earth diameter sorry earth periphery is this much so then they decided to make the meter as a one kilometer of today but then they found making one kilometer road is difficult to keep and preserve it is also difficult so they took one hundred sorry one thousand part of this one and make a one meter okay so and then they make a one meter of it okay so what happened then by this measurement and consecutive they found that one meter is the one one upon 10 power six part of this measurement and they call make a artifact and they call it as a one meter see now one meter is start from human body to the earth periphery and based on this they said this kind of measurement for all the time for all the people so there is no ambiguity because people will change geographically and from time to time time means like after father 100 years another person will come after 50 years another person will come and then you make the standard now they said no after person will change time in change but length remain the same meter will be the meter for many years so what happened based on this they made a meter bar you see first this meter bar okay and this meter bar is just made of platinum and platinum 
प्योर प्लेटिनम इज नॉट सो हार्ड देन साइंस गेट प्रोग्रेस पीपुल फाउंड द अलोइज एंड मेटल्स and their combinations so they found that when you mix with some another metal to the them and you make a mixer you make a alloy that will be more strong like you will see when you mix the iron with carbon you get the steel similarly they mix platinum with iridium and found it's very very strong so initially they used the platinum because that time it was believe that platinum is is the strongest material so it will not uh, have a damage breakage so earth as a defined definition of the metal was clear to everybody everybody accepted it. it's for all the time for all the people and more stable more stable means you cannot change now one meter because you have an artifact then the peroxide for arm and city base standard was just removed they are not convenient so meridian definition of the metal was used to create an artifact end to end standard and the meter of this arch this was the meter end to end from this end to this end it was a meter now you see your legal metrology have this the same same kind of one meter end to end you have some mark here i will show you next in the next slide so based on this one then people define the meter and this was very much in the spirit of egyptian cubit because same as the egyptian but egyptian cubit is based on pharaoh's four arm four arm will change but this this is based on the earth peri, peri, periphery perimeter so it's not change okay where the definite length was a primary standard artifact against which secondary working standard was calibrated so based on this then then the, in 1875 you see from 1791 to 1875 it took 100 years again them to define the meter to make one meter so then Tesla, a mechanical engineer, he made this kind of meter bar. What you legal metrology, what our NPL have, and they put these two marks and the distance between these two marks, end to end measurement, end to end result. This is one meter. They defined it is one meter. Now I will tell you in my next slide. You see, the fix are uh, fix distance between these two. okay and how it is moved to the optical frequency cone okay so this distance between these two is 1 meter so how what is the one meter we measure the distance by using the standard length historically it's a standard a standard fraction of the earth size you see this is the earth size okay and it's a fraction 10 to the power 6 okay so but but now science moves science moved very fast okay so what happened laser came into the picture okay laser came into the picture and people measure with the laser people measure with the laser you understand the sentence people measures with the lasers with the accuracy of nanometer the wavelength is in nanometer so they measure uh kind of the wavelength kind of the atomic size kind of the distance between atoms very precisely okay and at that time there was a great scientist whose name is michelson and he created an interferometer he created an interferometer okay and the interferometer made by him have bright and dark spot these bright and dark spots are equidistant and from one dark spot to bright spot the distance between two is lambda by 2 so if you have a wavelength of 630 nanometer 633 nanometer you have lambda by 2 like 370 meter so this this distance this distance is purely defined and exactly same so he gave a revolutionary idea and i will tell you the biggest discovery of this era is laser interferometer the biggest discovery of the science for precision measurement is laser interferometer and that's why we establish the laser interferometer at your rrs laboratories because interferometer 
are the first link between primary and secondary. So Michelson invented an interferometer, okay, and he said we can measure the distance more precisely with laser. So laser is a measure. Laser is a measure, and we can measure using laser. But that time the world is busy in making the road construction other things nobody realized about him people ignored michelson okay soon after when the industrial revolution take place industrial and then you need the precision in micrometer you need the precision in micrometer that time it was realized that this precision only possible using laser interferometer and then people thought to redefine the definition of SI unit meter using laser okay sorry using laser so instead of first laser they did the define the krypton meter maybe you are, some of you might have heard krypton so based on krypton lens and the frequency they defined the one meter in 1960 the year of the laser was invented same year because that time laser was not there so michelson did this experiment using helium lamp helium lamp then laser was not invented 1960 they used the krypton lamp this is the krypton lamp if you know this is the krypton lamp and based on this krypton lamp because krypton uh, fundamental frequency is defined so they do the meter was redefined as a certain number of wavelengths of the light from the krypton lamp if such amount of wavelength is coming a group of wavelength then total ensemble of that wavelength is one meter see understand here this is one meter but soon the purity of that light from krypton was found to be insufficient it was not pure so the accuracy measurement people were making with laser light and people started laser light instead of this one. So in 1983, the meter was again redefined and people use the laser. I know, okay, and I will tell you why they use hydrogen stabilized helium neon laser. So what they decide, they want a definition such that it should be constant. So before this, uh, 2019 resolution of having the all the fundamental unit uh, based on the uh, uh, constant meter was already defined based on the fundamental constant on the speed of light and what say if we choose the speed of light with some value and they said that the path traveled by light in vacuum in one by c second that is one meter so they they tried for many laser many wavelength other things then committee have decided and i will tell you in my next slide so that because they want electromagnetic radiation they can choose any electromagnetic radiation let's say microwave but it's difficult to generate microwave it is difficult to detect the microwave they cannot use the visible light uh, 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 sorry, invisible light, infrared, and other thing, X-ray, because they are pro problematic. They cannot be seen by the eye. So the best choice was a helium neon, a visible light, which can be seen and easy to operate. So they use a helium neon laser as a brilliant choice, and they made it at the primary. And I will show in my next slide. So how they define? So the meter is defined is the length of the path traveled by light traveled by light in vacuum during a time interval of one by c c this is the value of c they define so effectively what happened you have fixed constant c this number if you want to measure the wavelength of any wavelength means the distance here you can say if you know the exact frequency of something you know the exact frequency, you know the exact C, then you can define the lambda. The C, understand the physics behind definition. 
okay when we when we do dimension metrology we don't understand these kind of things so if you know the frequency of any light we know its wavelength so definition incorporates the improvement in laser and frequency measurement of course so you need such a laser whose frequency is defined so the primary standard of length is not on the wavelength 633 nanometer it's on the frequency so laser was become a de facto length standard so in 1970 everybody said krypton lens is not good let's take the iodine sterile helium neon laser okay and people choose iodine sterile helium neon laser like this one okay so this was the primary standard now you say how it become the primary standard so what happen i will tell you come here let's say so cipm adopted in 1983 1983 and they say if you realize the meter based on mis and pratik that is a document which define the definition of meter and if you do by any one of these following three methods then meter is automatically defined so by means of the length l of the path traveled by light in vacuum in time t using relation l is equal to c0t the speed of light in vacuum is this much so you know speed of light if you know the time time means frequency you can know the length so this is the direct time of flight method and by this is used to know the distance let's say from earth to moon so what happened when apollo apollo went from earth from earth to moon it put a big uh, retro reflector on the surface of moon now laser light is sent from the earth okay and the signal goes from earth to the moon and come back so this is 2d by t the time and you can uh, uh, you know now the time you know the length so th that's why you can realize one meter but it's not practical way okay it's not practical way because you cannot you have some uncertainty of measurement because of the refract index changing varying then there is another method by means of the lambda of light in vacuum whose frequency is f okay this lambda is obtained from the measurement frequency using the relation lambda is equal to c by f which i told you there okay so so c is defined this much so if you know the frequency you know c0 you can obtain the lambda but practical realization of this kind is done by other thing so what they did in cipm by mr pradeep they said by means of one of the radiation whose stated wavelength in vacuum or whose stated frequency can be used with uncertainty shown provided the given specimen accepted to practice are follow so they have given five wavelength and if you realize these five wavelength okay you are automatically realizing the si unit meter and that one of the radiation wavelength is 633 nanometer okay so one of the radiation is 6 so what you do method a is method a is this one by means establish the practical length practical length is standard by using the frequency certain modified laser whose performance is given carefully using method b and calculating the wavelength in this way a laboratory standard non frequency can be constructed so what happened cipm gave five recommendation assign whose so npl also adopted the same and npl have adopted the iodine stable helium lens 630 nanometer that time okay but what happened so we use the we use the iodine stabilized helium neon laser this much but here what we found if you see i will tell you what what is the practical problem here so <coughs> practical problem is uh, practical problem i will tell you later okay so what happened this laser have some not only but see this measurement have some kind of uncertainty some kind of so it's based on iodine iodine and iodine have some fixed frequency 
and that frequency if you log then it's okay if you don't log then you lose so what happened in 2005 theodore hones gave and john hall gave a better idea to improve the measurement of the frequency because you see the one meter is defined based on the absolute frequency measurement by helium neon laser you cannot measure the frequency correctly you see here if you cannot measure frequency absolutely you cannot define the si unit meter so they gave a idea brilliant idea other than helium neon laser they introduce the optical frequency comb okay so why comb comb because it gives the direct realization of the definition of meter it give the real time synchronized with the because you have to define the frequency through the time and in helium neon laser you take a time signal but here you don't need a time signal you need a time signal through the gps optical fiber optical fiber moves very fast as a coaxial cable and it gives the high dynamic range there you have only one wavelength here you have many other wavelength so this is successfully used as a frequency ruler frequency ruler means you know exact frequency you know c0 then you can do the uh, l in more precise manner so what is an optical frequency comb so that's i tell you so in helium neon laser you have iodine frequency you have some 3 to 5 frequency component to log but in optical frequency comb what i have i have an optical spectrum consisting of equidistant optical frequency up to 10 to power 5 to 10 to power 6 instead of 3 or 5 i have 10 to power 6 and all are same all are same so what when all are same i can log any mode because you see the repetition of frequency is same but repetition of frequency here is not same you see here repetition is not same you see this is bigger than this one if you see here this is bigger than this one it's not same but here you see it's same so how then what we can how do we realize the meter using optical comb so we take the signal from cgm atomic clock we use the optical frequency comb and we measure the frequency with an accuracy of 10 to 19 there we use to measure up to 10 to minus 7 okay and using this one cipm recommended frequency is calibrated this lambda is equal to c by f you make the interferometer and then you disseminate you disseminate through the gauge block distance meter and other things so this is by the international committee for weights and measurement recommended in 2005 but you see now we are procuring it and establishing 2024 almost 20 years later so science needs some times to get mature so why comb because as i said comb lines are equal the distance between two modes is same which is not same here if you see which is not same here if you see which is not same okay and you can log any mode it is like this one you understand if you have thousands of employee and you can give your work to just two or three employee then you have a uncertainty if some employee will not come some employee cannot do some employee is not efficient it's not low but you have 10 to 5 employee and all employee are equal all employee are capable to do thing then your production will increase your capability will increase the same thing is in comb because you have 10 to 5 comb mode you can log any mode then uncertainty of blocking is gone when uncertainty of locking is gone you have less uncertainty to lock the frequency so frequency because frequency is the main you see here if you cannot have precise frequency you cannot have wavelength precisely so you lock some mode you take care of the refractory index 
and this is free from the defect index you see this is free from the defect index if you want to if you look this more and you do this calculation you found the free level wavelength is totally depend on the mode number and sweeping of the mode so how we do we we have a comb here we make an interferometer and then we measure the distance under this using this interferometer because your frequency is fixed your c is fixed using this one you know f and 2f between these two is also f okay so frequency is fixed and then you can measure the distance or wavelength you can see so this is the optical frequency comb which npl have bought so why comb which as i told you these comb this this iodine stabilized helium neon laser have this defg hij if you cannot look this this seven component okay then it is difficult but in comb what you have n number of modes and you can lock any mode because and there the repetition rate is same which is not same there so so you stabilize a comb with the frequency and you lock this one and once you lock one frequency okay what happen all combs lines are same okay and you get to know the exact frequency you see frequency here you can get to know the exact frequency and i will show again you this one so using this we measured the frequency you this is the frequency okay and this is the uh, renisa laser if you see this is a laser which we calibrate okay so similar way so what happened what happened the light from here the light from the laser goes from here through this optical fiber and mix here this is a frequency mixer and the comb goes from here to here here and then again pass through the same and mix here and mixing of this frequency take place because you have an interferometer here f to f which remove all the noise okay and using this one what you found if you use this one if you use this one you lock the frequency with answer to minus 18 by this if you do so this is not 633 nanometer this is 474 terahertz 474 terahertz is 633 nanometer so what you do you can find any frequency here using this formula if you know the exact frequency using this formula in this comb okay then you know the exact frequency and you see if you compare the data from helium neon laser to the optical frequency comb you found here you see the frequency variation in megahertz so accuracy is very very less and but here you see you can measure frequency in sub hertz less than 10 hertz 610 to 620 less than 1 hertz 10 hertz sorry okay so you are frequency measurement is more and more accurate as compared to helium neon laser and this is the frequency measurement so if you realize this frequency or you can say wavelength okay then you is automatically define the si unit meter and with this result i say i means i not only we exactly know the mode number we exactly know the apparent repetition then we know the frequency and once we know the frequency once we know the frequency we can know the wavelength lambda and by this if you see here by this if we know the frequency we can get wavelength lambda and in this way we can define the one meter so with this i i thank and i think i finish my talk so this is the comb and i will just show you there are some problem uh, of course till now basically what is this frequency how it is stable you can ask me but this is stable because you know the frequency with an accuracy of 10 to minus 19 there you have frequency of 10 to minus 7 tomorrow if some better come because now the now the time is of picometer and femtometer so this laser is up to micrometer okay but nanometer picometer femtometer how can you define 
based on your one meter, then you need more and more precise source, and that is optical frequency comb. So this is the this is the final realization of SI unit meter using optical frequency comb. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I I hope I make you understand now. Yes, sir. Yeah. एक मिनट सर अग्रवाल सर को बुला लेता हूँ नहीं नहीं कोई बात नहीं है कोई भी क्वेश्चन हो तो आप पूछ सकते हैं डायरेक्ट सर के आने से पहले कोई दिक्कत नहीं है अतुल जी आ, मेरे ख्याल से समझ में आया होगा कि कौन क्यों लिया गया क्यों कैसे आया जी Okay, so there are some questions. I will take constructive or destructive frequency, which uh, will tell us the more precise wavelength. Okay, perimeter core. So if you see, you take constructive or you take destructive. If you see beta, beta means width or fringe width. Fringe width is the same. So if fringe width is the same, then there is no problem. You can take any. You can start from bright light to dark, but mostly if you see center is always dark. Okay. And first fringe we call bright fringe. Okay. So anyone you take. Second question is how to measure the stability of the frequency. Yes. So as I as if you see my presentation there, we stabilize this frequency using the optical reference standard first thing second thing is our timing jitter is very less okay so we measure the stability by counting the mode number exact mode number so if you have uh, can you see here my my slide here i Anybody, just uh, those who asked that question, you see the my my slide here. So if you if you count the exact mode number here, and since you have your repetition rate and you know your F zero carrier envelope frequency, EO, so you can stabilize this frequency. Okay, 
then what is the other question any other question yeah any other better cmc of primary and second stage will improve cmc of industry yes yes will improve so if you see here I, i will show one again my slide you see here the accuracy of this is 10 to minus 7 and accuracy of this is 10 to minus 19 i i wrote here 16 but it's minus 19 so if you go from uh, this one you see here uh, the graph which i saw here so the cmc you see the previously is minus 8 is of iodine stabilized laser now this is by comb if you measure interferometer it's up to minus 8 so you gauge block distance meter other things you can do more precisely so better cmc so ashutosh sir i will i will write a proposal to you for better to we will discuss we will, we will discuss cmc using optical frequency comb as a concept note and then we will, we will discuss yes sir we will discuss sir yes sir we will discuss thank you so anybody else who wish to ask or so sir kindly sharing your kindly kindly share screen one more thing. now so now the calibration of primary gauge block grade k will be by this new technique or it will be say no no the two thing uh, people have established if you see egypt and other other country or even uh, bipm and us they are also measuring the gauge block using comb and also with the uh, gauge block interferometer so both are okay because gauge block limit gauge block uncertainty is 0.2 0.2 micron okay k grade if k grade uncertainty is in 0.2 micron so you can use normal interferometer if it is more than 0.2 micron let's say 0.02 micron nanometer then of course you need comb but that is not defined yet so you understand the practicability practicability for practical use of course you can calibrate the gauge block using comb but as per definition of the uncertainty defined for gauge block by by NABLR, by CIPM and by committee is 0.2 micron for K grade. So that's sufficient to do by this one. Okay, any other? Sorry, sir. My request is kindly switch. Sir, kindly uh, I'll share your presentation, please. Uh, I will share to you. No issue. Sir, and I'll share your presentation, please, now, sir, from the screen. All the participants are requested to kindly switch off your mics and switch on your videos we are just taking the pictures of all the participants to place it on our all social media portals the presentation will be shared shortly today by in whatsapp or others way and uh, the, the video will also be available on youtube channel and other social media portals uh, but actually one request is here uh, some of the data which we are going to be claimed by the bipm because comb is not still primary so we have to so that's why that part i will cut because it, sure. it is it is no uh, sure. it is the uh, uh, legal document no issue yeah. no issue no issue yeah so my request is uh, yeah the, the data which has not been published yet you may kindly uh, kindly uh, re remove it from the slides and then kindly share these slides to me so that i can share with all the participants yeah, okay, okay. sir kindly unshare this presentation now from the screen Unshare, okay. Yeah. Uh, stop sharing. Okay. Yeah.
so your video is also off kindly switch on yeah thank you but it is not unshare atul ji can you unshare सर एक बार ना ये सर एक बार ये ऑफ हो गए फिर से लॉग इन कर ले सर ये कौन मैं हाँ सर हाँ सर आपका वो शेयर दिखा रहा है सर Sir, we have taken ten uh, or more. Okay, thank you. So now I think that all of uh, the participants are already linked with me on the WhatsApp group. If anybody who has not linked yet, kindly send me a WhatsApp message for adding in the group with his name, organization, and the designation if available. So so that I will add it in a proper in an appropriate group. I think with this, we can. With all the participants, Mr. Javeria and uh, our Honorable Dikshit Sir, for having this meeting today. Next week, next uh, at 11 o'clock, again we will meet with the next topic. With this, I would like to thank all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you all.